Hi everyone! Today we're going to take a look at a new feature that we have in Composer Pro. It's called the Firebase Connector. Now, uh, as a first thing we should, we should find out what is Firebase if everyone is not familiar with that. Firebase is, is a solution by Google and it's a, it's a, a collection of different services uh, for building applications. And uh, for, for our purposes with Composer, we'll be leveraging mostly the backend services. Namely, in this video, we'll be going through the, the Fire Store service and then the authentication service and how we can integrate them as part of Composer Pro. And um, the reason why we have created this Firebase connector is that uh, Firebase, again by Google, uh, has a full free tier, uh, but it also offers scalability up to up to professional scenarios and all types of things like that. So, so we feel that it's a good way for for uh, you to get started, but with a platform that will then later scale to your needs as you go along. Now, if we just look at uh, Composer Pro here, we have the familiar data tab here. We're used to finding your data resources. Uh, if we click on here, uh, we can see that we have the data resources tab, but, but there's also a new tab called connectors. And if we click on the connectors tab, uh, we can find the Google Firebase connector. Uh, and we can configure that, but to configure that, uh, we need to have a Firebase project. So that's what we're going to be doing first. We'll go into Firebase and we'll set up the project and then we can return here once we have the information from the Firebase side that we need. Okay, jumping over to Firebase here, uh, I've signed up for Firebase account and, and started using it and this is basically the view you will end up after the sign up process. Uh, you, in Firebase, you create these projects. I have a couple of one here, and we're going to make a new one to, to look at how it's done. Let's click on add project. Uh, first, we have to uh, give it a name. Uh, well, I think my first project will be just fine. And then uh, it'll give this uh, unique identifier also for your project. So you can really enter anything you want here. Then we press continue. And uh, then uh, we'll be told a few things about uh, Firebase as a platform. Be sure to, to um, uh, know at least about the billing and, and uh, do read up on how the permissions and user roles work, especially if you're going into, into production. But with that, we can continue. Uh, we can enable Google Analytics for the Firebase project also. This can gather you some useful data, but for, for this uh, demonstration, uh, we'll turn it off because we won't be needing analytics for this. But you can leave it on if, if that's something you desire. And then we arrive to the Add Firebase button. And then it'll spend a while creating our project. There we go, your new project is ready. Okay, and this is the main project view. Uh, let's dismiss some, some information here. And um, Firebase is telling us to, to add an app to get started. So, so uh, we created the project, but to interface it with something, we should also create an app, which is basically a container that will then contain the API keys and some other information that we'll need for, to do the integration. Uh, some of the terminology here might uh, seem a bit strange, but um, the good thing is that once we have Firebase connector set up, then we don't need to do care too much about doing stuff uh, with the configuration and rather the, the parts that we are going to use are, are quite simple. So before creating the app, I will just go through the bits that we'll be touching in this video. We'll be working with the Firestore database. So uh, that's, a, that's a database uh, that, that we can use and it, we can create a data model and then integrate it with, with AppGyver. So this will be replacing the, the AppGyver cloud storage as it was before. 
and, and then we'll also be working with authentication and this will give us give us a, a, a user management and the ability to to easily easily uh, manage users and and uh, with advanced features such as such as email links and 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 passwordless sign in and all kinds of things. So you will see that this is actually a rather improved solution uh, to your to your um, apps. But let's first uh, go back to the project overview and then let's start by adding an app. Uh, I'll be working with iOS today, so I'll be adding an iOS app. Okay, so here's the configuration for adding the iOS app in Firebase. Uh, first thing, uh, the, actually the only thing we need to enter is the iOS bundle ID. Uh, now this is something that you might already have if you have your iOS developer account set up, but if you don't, uh, for now, you can just make it up. The only thing that matters is that this should match the one that you're using with build service when you eventually create builds. But for now, we'll just uh, create an identifier here. So something like this. And these two we don't need to add. So uh, we can just register the app. There we go. And uh, now that we're done, um, there's some information that we're going to need uh, for for uh, for the Firebase connector in Composer Pro, and uh, Firebase kind of assumes we would be integrating with Xcode, but we're not. But we can still uh, make use of some of the information in this well, which we'll be looking at in a second. Uh, and then uh, let's just uh, exit because we don't need to do any further steps. Uh, then a uh, useful thing here is that if we go um, next to the project overview and click the cog icon and then we enter project settings. Now if we scroll down uh, we can actually see the iOS app container that we've set up. So this is just a container so that Firebase uh, knows that we can integrate stuff with, with Firebase through this app. So, so uh, this is and this just targets you know, an iOS app, so we'll configure it on the other side. Now, um, some of the content that we'll need, we'll get like the iOS specific uh, integration keys we get from this Google service dash info plist file. So let's download that. And then um, we'll need some other more general keys. And so far, the best way of uh, getting to these on Firebase I've found is by creating a web app so which will display this these integration keys kind of nicely so let's click here add app and let's choose the web platform and then just uh, let's type in any name pretty much this is only for for firebase internal use and we don't need to set up firebase hosting and then we just press register app um, yeah, and there we go. And this is pretty much uh, the the keys that we'll be needing needing uh, in the in the follow up to this. And then we'll just uh, continue to the uh, back to the project settings page. And and uh, now if we choose the web app, uh, we'll get this. And if we click here, it just shows us the config option. So if we see that this uh, this now uh, describes us the API key, the auth domain, the project ID, storage bucket, so on. Now if we go back to Composer and back to this Firebase connector page we were at, we'll notice that let's disable the IS configuration for a moment. Um, we'll we'll notice that uh, uh, we have them. I'll leave this pre-filled in so you don't have to watch me copy paste things. Uh, we notice that here we have uh, a common to all of these different app configurations. These are common integration parameters. So there's project ID, auth domain, storage bucket, and measurement ID and message messaging sender ID. And uh, in Firebase, these are the easiest to find in the web app. Once you create one, it just gives them to you here. So even if you are not like, even if you're not building a web app, just make one in Firebase and you'll have much easier time to uh, access this information. And then next we'll uh, take a look at the, the uh, 
Google service info file and, and um, what it contains and how do we put it into the container. Okay, and now we're looking at the Google service info file, this plist file that we got off the, the Firebase iOS configuration. And as we can see for the Firebase connector, we'll be needing three things. We need an iOS app ID, iOS API key, and an iOS client ID. Well, this is a little bit of an XML, but it's nothing too hard to, to work with. So we can see right away that the uh, first thing, one of the things that we need, the client ID is here. So we'll just uh, copy that over. And then um, the iOS API key, that would be this API key here. Uh, as you can see, this format is, is designed to be rather machine readable, but, but we can still make do with a, with a text editor of our choosing. And then we have the iOS app ID, uh, which is this one, the, the Google app ID here. And then we copy that over there. And now we are actually, uh, we have configured the basic parameters here from which we got from the web app configuration, funnily enough, and then we have uh, configured the iOS app parameters here. Now we can save, and now our uh, Firebase connector is all configured up. Now we can actually um, uh, start working with Firebase and adding some features. And the first one we're going to look at is the storage. So. Uh, which we'll eventually use to create a data resource on the uh, app cover side. Uh, let's, so let's go back to Firebase and on the left side here uh, we can see all of these different areas of Firebase. So there's authentication, Firestore database and so on. So to create a database here uh, let's click on Firestore database and then uh, we want to hit the create database button and uh, for now, let's let's uh, uh, we'll we'll actually uh, start in production mode for, for this one. Uh, so it says all third-party reads and writes will be will be denied, but we can also change that in uh, later. Uh, and then, uh, importantly, we should select a location uh, for our database. So perhaps for us uh, here in Europe, uh, the European uh, data location uh, would make more sense. So, so just be sure to uh, choose an option that works for you and is, is compliant with your needs. And then we just press enable. And then it creates the database. Okay, and this is the main view of the Cloud Firestore. We're mainly going to be interested in the data and the rules section. So let's have a quick look at the rules section. Um, so by default, uh, uh, this uh, rules defined here, which you can customize to your needs. Now it's saying that, um, that uh, we are not going to, to uh, allow reads and writes at all. So, uh, for example, a good testing setup so that we can just see some data going would be uh, to allow reads um, if true. So this enables us to, to just test test uh, the database working without without allowing anyone to, to write actually into our database, which is probably something we don't want to enable. And then we can just publish the rules changes here. Uh, and then uh, for the data part, uh, we should start a collection. So a collection uh, is, is something that, uh, well, for example, here it says collection users would contain a unique document for each user. So you probably get the general idea of this. So we'll, but we'll create a uh, collection called to do's as is the tradition here. Um, and then uh, we can uh, enter some parameters for the document. Uh, we can 
automatically create an automatic ID for it uh, and then uh, we can create a field called name and then um, let's say well actually let's call it title and then let's say walk the dog yeah so there we go so now we've started the collection and as we can see uh, it comes with with uh, this this one document here uh, that has the, the so we have one to do with the title walk the dog and we can we can add other one uh, again with a with a uh, title and then uh, we'll say buy groceries and we can automatically enter the ID for that as well so so this is not terribly complicated so now we have a collection called to do's and then we have two documents with both having a title walk the dog and there's uh, amazing amount of things that you can do with the Firestore structure but but uh, you should really read up on all those possibilities on your own time uh, so that is the the uh, database cloud Firestore uh, collection setup so now we can actually uh, go here on the app cover side and we can using the firebase connector create a data resource so now we have this option here create a data resource google firebase cloud firestore resource and if we press that uh, we should give the data resource name so this is the name for app Giver composer pro internal use and then we should write the firestore collection name as we typed it in there so uh, in our case to do and the resource schema we need to enter that too it will always have an ID because as you saw the Firestore collection uh, documents had an ID and then we can also add here in the schema the property that we added so the title property there we go so now it has a title that's a text type and so on so now we save the data resource just as we did with, do with any other data resources after configuring the data resource, there's one important step we must remember to do in order to make our Firebase connector work. And that is adding a flow function on the global canvas. So if we navigate to the global canvas from the page menu, uh, and then we open the global canvas logic from here, uh, we see that on there's an app launched event. And then what we should do is we should find the Firebase initialized, uh, or rather, initialize Firebase uh, uh, flow function. And what this will do, it will take the configuration that we have specified and then it will initialize it. And this is necessary to make the Firebase connector work properly. And I already have it installed here, so I'll just drag it here and then I'll just connect it with the app launched event here like so and save and then we can uh, start working on the page itself uh, with the firebase data resource and now um, we'll go here and we can actually get rid of this title uh, oh yeah and then we should create a data variable as per usual from from our uh, data resource so here's the data variable and then uh, let's keep the default name and then uh, we'll just get all the, uh, for testing all the documents of, of the resource, so all the collection of data records here. We save. And then we go here and then we repeat with the data variable, which we know to be a collection of, of uh, items now. And there we go. And then because we entered the schema for the data resource, we can of course, uh, access the title property here so uh, and let's go ahead and, and uh, headline this with with to do's as well and then if we take a look in the preview app uh, it should be getting the documents from the um, firestore now and here I have my preview app open and as you can see it is working fetching the the records now 
uh, via the data resource which is using the Firebase connector which is then connected to the Firestore database and we're getting these, these things that we entered into the, the Firebase collection. So, so we have a couple of to-dos here. And next up we'll actually look at authentication. Okay, so we covered integrating to Firestore and now we're going to take a look at authentication with Firebase. So let's start by going here on the left to the authentication tab and from here we can click on get started. And uh, uh, Firebase authentication uh, has a couple of tabs. It has users and then sign-in methods which you can enable and then some other things. Uh, for AppFiber you can use two of them, anonymous authentication, and then you can use uh, email and password. And I'll just demonstrate the email and password authentication for now. So uh, let's uh, enable it from here. And as we can see as an option, we can uh, also uh, have a password, let's sign in with emails, but let's leave that blank for now. Let's save. Um, and then uh, uh, with that uh, authentication uh, sign-in enabled, we can go to the Users tab. And here's where we can simply manage the users that we want to authenticate. So uh, we'll just enter an email, uh, obitables at example.com. And then as password, uh, I will just enter very secure password for, for testing. And we press add user and now the user is added there and now we are, uh, have a user and we've enabled authentication so we can go to composer and uh, in composer to the auth tab and then we can click on enable authentication and here we have a new option now replacing some of the older ones which is Google Firebase email password authentication and what it, what this will do is it will do the same thing as previous authentication so it will add by default the authentication template with the kind of login view and all the the flow functions associated with that so we'll press ok and uh, it's working there so we'll just uh, have this as an initial view with firebase authentication and uh, now, as we can see, the authentication view has been added here. And if we take a look at, for example, the login button, we can see that it's using this bunch of uh, new flow functions specific to, to Firebase authentication to, to kind of log in the user. And, and you can use the template, but you can, of course, always customize everything to your, to your needs. And next, let's just take a look at how the authentication works. log in with our super secret password and an email and when we press this uh, we are logged into the application so using the firebase authentication is actually really really easy easy to do and, and uh, uh, will probably provide useful in a lot of authentication scenarios